Today on Studio G, Brenda Gomez shows that adults can still act their shoe size when it comes to roller skating. Reporter David Olson sits down in the studio with UNLV's own Julian Kilker to learn more about his latest photography exhibit. Also, join me, Susan Kocab, for your latest sports update. And I'm Stephen Marsh. We'll be telling you about your seven-day forecast. Some changes coming. I'll have that for you coming up. The Studio G starts right now. <laughs> We're the Jersey Boys, and you're watching Studio G. Good afternoon, and thanks for tuning into Studio G. I'm Rachel Johnson. And I'm Brittany Arrington. Here we go live to the Student Union. I'm standing here in front of the Student Union. As you can see, a feeding frenzy is going on. I'm reporting for Indian Studio G. Thanks, Brittany. Jorge Victorino Vasquez believed his wife's life was worth only $2,000. That's how much Victorino Vasquez paid an undercover officer he thought was a hitman to kill his 27-year-old wife and make it look like a home invasion. According to the man's arrest report released yesterday, he wanted his wife killed because she cheated on him, took his money, took his vehicles, and always threatened to call immigration to have him deported. He was arrested Saturday night and is being held without bail at the Clark County Detention Center on three counts of solicitation to commit murder, three counts of conspiracy to commit murder, and three counts of burglary. Winning the lottery once in a lifetime is pretty lucky. Winning the lottery twice in the same day? Virtually impossible. However, Virginia Fike is one of the few people that can describe that feeling. The jackpot was set at 80 million. Virginia picked numbers based on her parents' anniversaries and their ages at that time, divided by the year they were married. Fike, however, was unaware she took home that, the coveted award twice. She says, I saw a scroll on TV about there being two million, one million dollar winners. I looked at my mom and said, wouldn't it be funny if it was us? Fike is enjoying the $1.4 million she received after taxes. As adults, there are many activities that people grew up loving. At Crystal Palace, there is a special skating session that brings back memories. Reporter Brenda Gomez has the story. Roller skating is not only a popular pastime for teens, but for adults. <laughs> for Studio G, I'm Brenda Gomez. You know what, Bernie? Viola or Viola broke her elbow in that, and you know, I broke my left wrist. Three well, just come back after the break. Jocelyn Garcia has just the place for all you green thumbs out there. And Stephen Marsh brings you the seven day forecast. Stay tuned, Rebels. Welcome back to Studio G. I'm Stephen Marsh. We've got your weather. Uh, let's send it now back to Brittany for more news. Thank you, Stephen. Living in a desert makes it tough for locals to find good seasonal fruits and vegetables. However, there are many local farmers markets that are making it easier for locals to find the produce they are looking for. Las Vegas is not a suitable place for farming. The lack of rain and beaming sun. I'm Jocelyn Garcia. Again, that website is fresh52.com to find out more information on a farmers market near you. The feature film Hunger Games has finally met its match. After spending 28 weeks at number one, it finally fell from its number one position at the box office. Reporter Alex Bull has the info on who took over the reins. This past week saw a new film take the number one spot. New release, Think Like a Man, finally dethroned record blockbuster The Hunger Games. Think Like a Man took in $33 million its first weekend on the big screen. Another newcomer, the lucky one came in at number two with just under $23 million. After nearly a month at the top spot, The Hunger Games is settling for third place. It took in $14.5 million in ticket sales this weekend. To date, the film has grossed nearly $357 million. This has been Alex Bull reporting for Studio G. It actually found from its top spot of 28 days. Hunger Games will return to IMAX theaters for only one week on the 27th of April. A possible return to the top, sh top spot, we shall see. After the break, we bring you Studio G Sports with Susan Kocab. Stick around. Whether you're I am a UNLV student. We are UNLV. Welcome back to Studio G. This is a sports report. All I have for you today in sports, back to you guys at the desk. In other sports-related news, last Sunday was the final day of the College Wakeboard Championship at Lake Las Vegas. Arizona State took on Chico State of California. Chico State was able to out-trick Arizona in temperatures in the high 90s for the title. In attendance was last year's champion, South Florida. 
Texas A&M, Sacramento State, North Texas, Georgia, and Cal State Northridge. Wakeboarding is a relatively new sport, having originated in the late 1980s. In com it combines elements of water skiing, snowboarding, and surfing. It seems, the season is th it seems to be the season for daredevils to try to reach new <coughs> heights. American adventurer Dean Potter was snapped balancing 1,800 meters above sea level, conquering China's Insha Grand Canyon in just three minutes. He crossed the 41 meter long and two centimeter wide slack line without a harness or parachute. And 40 year old Dean even listened to the music on his headphones as he made his stomach churning journey. Elsewhere, a Russian group known as the Skywalkers have been caught climbing cranes, <coughs> statues, and bridges across the Russian, posing for dizzying photos. Coming up after the break, Bernina Tis gives us the international news. And Dave Olison will be sitting down with a special guest coming up next on Studio G. What's up, Studio G? It's George Lopez. Do your best at all times. Don't be like me. <laughs> Welcome back. We'll now send it over to the newsroom correspondent, Brittany Natisse, for stories coming from all over the world. Hey, Brittany. Thank you, Rachel. James Murdoch, a top executive. That's all today for your 360 World Recap. Reporting for the newsroom, I'm Brittany Natisse. Cheeky Prince Harry has let slip a royal secret. Harry has hinted that his brother William and wife Kate Middleton will run the 2013 London Marathon. At a prize giving event he told reporters jokingly that it was a fantastic that his brother was taking part. He then chuckled and said he's going to have to do it now. Sunday saw the 32nd London Marathon in which about 37,000 participants took part raising over 50 million British pounds for charity. The London Marathon is 26.3 miles long. Coming up after the break, we'll be joined with Julian Kilker, a pro UNLV professor of media technology and society. Don't go away. Here at the Greenspun College of Urban Affairs, we focus on four core values. This is the Hank Greenspun College of Urban Affairs at UNLV. And welcome back from the break, ladies and gentlemen. We are joined today by uh, Professor Julian Kilker, uh, Media Technology and Society. Uh, welcome, Dr. Kilker. Okay, thank you very much for your time, Dr. Kilker. We appreciate you coming in. Mm -hmm. And cool. now we are going to head back to the desk. And thank you, Julian, for joining us today. Well, that's all we have for our show. I'm Rachel Johnson. <laughs> and I'm Brittany Arrington. Make sure you send us any story ideas you have to our Facebook, and have a great day. Check out the quad. Do it. Do you want to be so great?